In this video, we will be covering the seven major topics of biosecurity for the goat farm. We will begin with healthcare and end with hygiene. Each topic has its own segment, which will be covered in this video. In this first topic, we will cover diseases and how to handle sick animals. Part of having a good biosecurity program is knowing that your animals are healthy. You should test all your existing livestock and any new livestock that you purchase for things such as caseus lymphodentitis, also called CL, and caprine arthritis encephalitis, which is also known as CAE. Running such tests help you ensure that you keep a healthy herd. When finding out how to conduct these tests, contact your local veterinarian. They should be able to help you find a place to do the tests if they cannot do it themselves. You should regularly vaccinate your animals for things such as tetanus. This includes not only breeding does and breeding bucks, but also weathers and kids. Regular vaccination helps prevent your animals from getting diseases that might otherwise kill them or infect other animals. Anytime you use a needle to vaccinate your animal or treat it in any way, you should never reuse the needles. You run a high risk of infecting other animals if you share needles between them. Needles are made for single uses and they are to then be placed into a proper sharps container. You should also keep health records up to date for all animals that you own. Keeping accurate and proper health records assists you in keeping animals healthy in the future. It will also help the veterinarian make a diagnosis should your animal become sick. Should one of your animals become sick or injured, it should be separated from the herd. If it is injured or sick, this will ensure that the animal is still getting enough feed and water to help it get better faster. If it is merely sick, this will help ensure that the rest of the herd does not become infected. If it's injured, this will help ensure that the injury does not become worse. When it comes to feeding sick animals, they should be fed last. This is because you will come into contact with pathogens that they are shedding through their urine, feces, and other bodily fluids. If you were to feed your sick animals before your healthy ones, you would be exposing your healthy animals to the pathogens of whatever disease your sick animal has. The same goes for treating sick animals. They should also be treated after you feed your healthy animals. Now we may move on to the next topic, feed and water. When purchasing hay, alfalfa, and even straw, you should inspect it thoroughly before purchasing it. Poor quality alfalfa and hay can result in your animals not eating it or becoming sick from eating it. Poor quality straw can be very hard on a fiber goat's coat. It can result in excess debris getting caught in their coat, which in severe cases may cause an abscess or a sore. Hay, alfalfa, and straw should all be free of dirt clods, dead animals, should not have a foul or bad smell, and should have few, if any, weeds and thorns. You should also do your best to keep pests out of your feed. This includes not only hay, but also grain. Pests such as mice and rats are known vectors for diseases such as trichinosis and leptospirosis. One way to keep pests out of your grain is to put your feed in tubs with coverings. When it comes to hay, alfalfa, or straw, you can place them off the ground, such as on a pallet or on a table of some sort. Rodents are more prone to getting after the grain, however, than they are the alfalfa, hay, or straw which is why I didn't suggest perhaps putting hay in a tub as well. When feeding your animal, you should never feed them on the ground. Hay should be fed in a hay net or hay feeder if your animal has horns, while grain should be fed in feed troughs or feed pans. 
feeding your animal on the ground greatly increases their risk of contracting parasites, such as whipworms, roundworms, and strongyles. It can also mean that if there is feces on the ground mixed in with the feed because it was fed on the ground, that they could consume the feces of other goats. When it comes to water, your animal should always have clean water in front of it at all times. Water buckets and water troughs should be cleaned regularly. Feces in water, which is prone to happen since they are goats, mosquito larvae, and algae buildup can all make your animals extremely sick. Water should be cleaned, as said earlier, regularly, and it can be cleaned out in the case of algae with a simple scrub brush and some water. No soap is necessary to do this. In the case of feces or mosquito larvae, you should dump out the water and provide fresh, clean water. The scrub brush may or may not be needed in this instance. However, you will still not need soap. Waters will need cleaned more frequently in the summer due to the heat and it being mosquito season. The heat makes the algae grow faster and the mosquitoes lay more eggs in the summer. We have now reached the third topic, your animals. When your animals are out on pasture, it's important that you remember to rotate them from one pasture to the next. This helps prevent overgrazing of a pasture. It also helps to prevent parasites. The longer a goat is on a pasture after it should have been rotated, the greater the risk of the animal picking up worms or other parasites. It's also good to give your pasture a break and allow it to recuperate. Fences require maintenance, and you should thus check your fences often. There's a saying in the goat world that if it can't hold water, it can't hold a goat. Because of this, you should check your fences often and fix them immediately if you see any kind of problem. Not only will this keep your goats in, but it'll help keep predators out. For goats with horns, it's not uncommon for them to get stuck in the fence when they decided the grass on the other side was greener than what they had. They will sometimes need help getting out of the fence when this happens. Goats are often used to control weeds. However, before turning your animals out to pasture, you should check for weeds that might be poisonous to them. Weeds such as foxglove and St. John's wort, even hemlock, are all poisonous to goats and are also all found in Oregon. You should also be on the lookout for plants that you might not consider weeds that you might grow in your own garden, such as rhubarb, poppies, oleander, and azaleas. These are all plants that are poisonous to goats. When it comes time for your does to kid, they should be provided with fresh, clean straw in which to have their kids. Newborn kids do not have strong immune systems. So if they are kitted out onto dirty straw, they are at risk for picking up bacteria, pathogens, viruses, or in general, any other disease. Being kitted out onto fresh, clean straw helps reduce these chances of them becoming sick. It also helps to keep the kids clean after being kitted. When kitting, your goats should be separated with their kids in smaller pens or stalls. This allows them to bond and regain their strength from the birthing process. Now we will get into the part on biosecurity for new animals. When purchasing new animals, you should buy from people that you are familiar with. This helps not only build a bond between you and a breeder, but it also helps you keep a healthy herd. The idea of buying a goat from someone you know stems from knowing the quality of animal you will be receiving and how healthy that herd is. If you are new to the industry and don't know anyone, it's suggested that you speak with a 4-H leader in that industry or contact local breeders to see who they would recommend. When you decide on a person 
of whom you will buy your animals from, you should only buy healthy animals. Animals that are emaciated, have diarrhea, a cough, are excessively sneezing, have a runny nose, or have any other kind of indicator of poor health should not be purchased. For dairy goats especially, if the udder does not look healthy when it is in milk and you were looking to purchase it, you should perhaps consider other options. An unhealthy udder might have sores, be lumpy, be bumpy, if touched it might be hard and or hot to the touch. If the udder is uneven, you should inquire about it. This is, of course, not inclusive of all indicators of an unhealthy udder, just some more commonly seen ones that you should avoid. When it comes to fiber goats, the fiber should be relatively healthy as well as clean. While fiber is very hard to keep 100% clean at all times, it should be free of things such as thorns, vines, and anything that can eventually cause sores. There should also be no bald spots or breaks in the fiber. These bald spots or breaks could be an indicator that the animal potentially has lice and has itched itself to cause the bald spots, or that the fiber is low in quality. When you do bring a new animal home, you should quarantine them for two weeks. However, if two weeks is not feasible for you, the minimum is seven days. Quarantining your animal allows them time to adjust to their new surroundings. It also keeps them from your herd. So, if they do end up being sick, even if they looked healthy at the previous owner's farm, you were able to treat it and not infect the rest of your herd. In addition to this, this quarantine allows you to ensure that they are eating the proper amount of feed. Moving between farms and or facilities is stressful for goats, so they may go off feed for a while. If they continue to not eat, or they eat a very minimal amount, you should continue to quarantine them and contact your local veterinarian. You should also quarantine your animals if they are just coming back from a show, from another person's house, or from being serviced by a buck that is not at your house and that you do not own. We may now move on to equipment and tools. The items and tools that you use for your goats should be disinfected and cleaned regularly. For more information on how to disinfect particular tools and equipment, you should reach out to your 4-H leader or local veterinarian. Regular disinfecting is to help control for pathogens and spores living on these items, which can make your goats and possibly you ill if they are not disinfected regularly. Gloves should be worn to do this to protect your skin from potentially harsh chemicals. These gloves should be disposed of properly. Do not simply keep them around to be used at a later time. You should use disposable gloves that you may simply toss in the trash can. Pens and anywhere you are housing your goat should be cleaned regularly. Dirty pens can decrease the value of a fiber goat's fiber and makes the dairy goat's udder more susceptible to things such as mastitis or infections. For the market goats, also commonly called meat goats, it can result in decrease in weight. In the pygmy goats, it can cause general health problems. When you do clean your goat's areas, you should not use the equipment that you use to feed, such as wheelbarrows or pitchforks. This is because it can increase the goat's chances of contracting an illness. It's also rather unsanitary. Should one of your goats become sick, you should not take it anywhere. Unless, of course, this is to take it to the vet. Taking sick animals to shows, workshops, or meetups to practice showing your animal increases the risk of not only infecting other people's animals, but also possibly getting other people sick. Since some diseases can be spread from goats to humans. Sick animals should always stay at home unless they are being taken to the vet. 
when you do use your stock trailer to take your animals places, be it to the vet, to a show, or anywhere else, you should clean it between uses. It's also wise to disinfect it if you are coming back from a show. This can be done by mixing three-fourths of a cup household bleach to one gallon of water in a backpack sprayer or a pump sprayer. If you are not hauling your animals to a show in a stock trailer and are instead bringing them in the back of a truck or in a large dog kennel, you should also clean and disinfect this after the show. We will now move on to the topic of disposal. When one of your animals passes, be it through disease or old age, you must properly dispose of the body. If you live within city limits, cremation may be your only option. However, whether you live within city limits or out on a farm, you should contact your local code enforcer to see what the laws are surrounding disposal of a dead animal. Sharps containers are used to hold needles, syringes, and lancets. You do not need your own individual sharp container. You may pull your sharps into someone else's sharps container. However, if you have your own, you must properly dispose of it. You should contact a local doctor's office or veterinarian in figuring out how to properly dispose of this sharps container. You should never dispose of items that should go into a sharps container into the trash. Now we move on to the final topic of hygiene. When it comes to manure piles, the piles should not be kept in the same pen as the goats. While the goats may love playing on this, especially the kids, it increases their risks of contracting parasites and potentially other diseases. You should instead supply them with things that are clean and safe for them to play on. Visitors to the farm should be restricted from certain areas, such as the kidding area or the area where sick animals are kept. This is because for kids, they have a weak immune system having just been born, and sick animals do not need the extra stress put on them from new people coming and seeing them, unless, of course, it is the vet. This also helps to control for the spread of disease and parasites. When you visit other farms that have animals, you should not wear the shoes, boots, clothes, or gloves that you wear out to your animals. This is to help keep their herd from potentially getting anything that you may or may not know about from your goats. You may also consider asking people coming to your farm from theirs that they also do the same. You should have clothes that are specifically set aside to work with animals. I prefer to call these farm clothes. This helps to preserve your non-farm clothes and also can help to control for disease. These clothes should be washed separately from your non-farm clothes and from the clothes of other people who do not have farm clothes. Washing machines and dryers do not sterilize or disinfect in any way. They merely clean off what can be seen to the eye. This means certain bacteria and pathogens that survive the washing and drying process could potentially be transferred to the clothes of other people and non-farm clothes. And finally, you should always wash your hands after handling animals. This helps prevent you from taking in pathogens that may not make your goat sick, but would make you sick. We have now completed the basics of farm biosecurity for goats. This video does not go into the finer, more specific details that perhaps are individual to each type of goat. As you become more familiar with goat raising, you will also become more familiar with biosecurity.